Hi, I'm Kyle with DIY Auto Homeschool and today we're continuing our discussion on emission systems. We're talking about the evaporative emission system. Now the evaporative emission system, commonly referred to as the EVAP system, has the job of capturing the fuel vapors from the gas tank and holding them inside a charcoal canister until they can be burned in the engine uh, during normal operation. Now, this system is usually considered very difficult to diagnose and deal with, but it's not because of the function of the system or what it's doing. Uh, it gets into how it does that and some of the components in the system. But we'll talk about that in a future video. In this video, I just want to uh, discuss and show you guys just exactly what this system is supposed to do and the method in which it uh, does that. So. Years ago, before we had the EVAP systems, fuel tanks, because they would build up pressure as gasoline uh, evaporated because it's an extremely volatile fluid, uh, they would, you know, they build up pressure. They just had a valve that would release that pressure out into the atmosphere. But with that pressure, it also released a lot of hydrocarbon emissions with the fuel. So, I said on our older systems, we just had this one portion piece right here is a valve that would vent the pressure uh, to prevent it from building up inside the fuel tank. And if you can imagine, if you've ever seen uh, a gas can, you put fuel in and you seal it up and it sits there and it swells up over the time over time. Well, you know, sitting out in the sun or sitting out in the heat, as that fuel vapor, as that fuel evaporates, that's what happens. And that's what would happen to a fuel tank if it didn't have a way to deal with that pressure and release it. So that's why they had these, but to lower the emissions, we had to create a new system. So now we take those same fuel vapors that build up in the gas tank and we transport them through a small line into the charcoal canister. Uh, now the charcoal canister is full of activated charcoal. Activated charcoal is designed to be extremely porous, but very small micropores that allow the fuel vapors to seep into them and hold those vapors until they can be released. Now, when they go in here, they sit in here and they just wait. And then when the PCM or ECM, VCM, whatever kind of vehicle you're working on, uh, it sees that the engine is the right engine speed, engine load, throttle position, all of that to be able to handle it, it will open the purge valve which will expose the charcoal canister to engine vacuum. This is just an open shut valve. And when engine vacuum is exposed to that, it lowers the pressure enough that it can actually draw those fuel vapors out of the activated charcoal. So uh, it can hold it, but then when it's exposed to the low pressure of the engine vacuum, it will release those vapors and allow them to run into the engine where they can be burned like any other fuel. Now, because we rely on a flow through here into the engine, there is a filter and a vent valve that allows fresh air to flow in there uh, so that we don't just get you know, stuck with a big vacuum pole on this charcoal canister and never able to release it. So uh, the vent valve is also used in the computer and its self-diagnostic purposes, uh, but this is getting a little deeper into how specific systems work because not all of them work exactly the same, but they all have the same function of basically a charcoal canister designed to hold the fuel vapors. The fuel vapors are transported from the tank into the canister and they're held there until the engine can support them being added because it's basically added fuel and if you added it at the wrong time, like at idle or right when it started up, it might kill the engine because it would run too rich, it would be, have too much fuel. So when the engine can handle it, it runs it through the purge valve into the engine. So that, as you can see, as I said, that's an extremely sy uh, easy system to understand. It's not that difficult. Uh, the problem comes when you get to diagnosing those, which is what we will discuss in one of our next videos. But thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I hope that you understand the goal and how, uh, how the evaporative emission system reaches that goal. I will see you in the next video.